Hi, thanks for joining me for this little video on spring flowers. It's a beautiful day in late March. All the birds are singing. And next to me here is coral honeysuckle, a vine native to Texas. It actually blooms off and on throughout the year, even on mild days in the winter. But now in early spring, the black-chinned hummingbirds are back and they're enjoying the nectar from this. Enjoy the video. And the coral honeysuckle is scientifically known as Lanicera sempervirens. No fragrance, but very pretty. This is an early spring flowering bulb, one of the Tazetta narcissus similar to the paper white narcissus. However, this one is white and yellow, and it's a variety called Grand Primo. It will typically bloom in February and early March. This is one of our earliest flowering plants in the hill country, and it's familiar throughout the area. The Agarita, or Mahonia trifoliolata, these flowers are very fragrant and very attractive to bees. This particular specimen is quite nicely shaped. Here's a plant I featured in a previous video, Golden Ground Cell. It's a native perennial, also called Pacara obovata. It has these little yellow daisies early in the spring and the evergreen foliage down at the base. It will seed out and form colonies, as you can see here. The deer don't like this plant, and it's quite nice in the spring. Golden ground cell. Here's a lovely native flowering tree, the Mexican plum, Prunus mexicana. This is one of our earliest flowering trees, and the flowers are very fragrant. Here's one growing natively in a wooded area. The dark bark is quite a nice contrast to the pure white flowers. Mexican plum. Another familiar flowering tree early in the spring is the Texas redbud, Circus canadensis variety texensis. And the Texas variety is the one you should plant. Here's a close-up of the flowers. And another flowering tree that's quite attractive is the pear. This is a fruiting variety. This particular one is called Fan Still. And the peach. This is a fruiting peach. Another plant I featured in another video was the Perky Sue, or Four Nerve Daisy, Tetranurus scoposa. This is a very familiar wildflower throughout the area. The peak blooming period is in early spring, although it can bloom just about any time of year. And these are growing in my cactus garden. Here's a close-up of the flowers. Perky Sue. An annual relative of the Perky Sue is Tetranurus linearifolia. This is sometimes so abundant that it creates fields of gold. They're not available from nurseries as far as I know, but I've sown them in my cactus garden and had them come up from seed. They grow very well in gravel. Here's a mountain laurel. This particular one is growing as a tree. More often it's a shrub. 
And it's very popular in the spring with these grape bubblegum smelling flowers. Here's a close up. And you can see last year's seed pods hanging on this plant. A small flowering tree or a large shrub that I like is Chinese Photinia. It can be quite attractive in the spring with these clusters of white flowers. It's a better plant to uh, cultivate than the popular Fraser's Photinia, in my opinion, because it has colorful red berries in the fall and winter. Here's a close-up of the foliage. The name Photinia serrulata is um, very apt because you can see the serrated edge on the leaves. Here's a Mexican buckeye, a small flowering tree or a large shrub similar in appearance to the red bud. But the foliage is quite different. If you look closely, you can see last year's seed pods on this plant. It's a very tough, drought-resistant plant, and it grows all over the hill country and into West Texas in the mountains there. Mexican Buckeye. And last but not least is one of our taller native yuccas, Yucca torii or Tori Yucca.